So we've looked a lot at serializers throughout this course. This is going to be a short video where we look at the model serializers fields attribute on the meta class. Now, as we know, and as we've seen throughout the course, when we have a model serializer subclass, we define in the meta class which model it's linked to and also the fields on that model that we want to specify as part of the serialized data. So what we're doing here is explicitly setting the fields. And in my opinion, this is actually the best option. But we're going to discuss some other approaches in this video because you're very likely to find them in real life as you become a developer and start working for companies. And actually, I've seen these different approaches very recently, and some of them are, in my opinion, suboptimal. So it's important to know about these, and we're going to discuss them in this video. Now, before we dive in, if you want to support the channel, we've got this coffee page that's linked below the video. And many thanks to everybody that supported the channel on here. It's greatly appreciated. And don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. Now, what we're going to look at here is we're going to look at a section in the model serializer part of the documentation and it's specifying which fields to include. And the approach for this model serializer is to explicitly add fields here. But as well as that, you can add a special value and that's the dunder all value. And that indicates that all fields in the model should be used. We're going to see an example of that and we're going to discuss whether or not that's a good approach in this video. And there's also an exclude attribute that we're going to look at a bit later in the video as well. So let's go to serializers.py and at the top of this file we're going to write a new serializer here called user serializer and that's going to inherit from that model serializer and what we're going to do in this video is we're going to work with the user model and create some API endpoints for listing out different fields on that model and we're going to show the pros and the cons of doing that so in the meta class of the model serializer let's link this to the user model and we need to import that at the top. So let's bring that in from models.py. And then to begin with, we're going to explicitly define the fields here. So let's say from the user model in Django, we're going to bring in the username. We're going to bring in the email address. And let's bring in the Boolean is staff. And this is the field that determines whether the user has access to the Django admin. Now, what we're going to build up here is going to mirror what I saw in production once. And it's not a good practice. But let's start with this one here. Now, if we go to the views.py file, I've added at the bottom here a new view and it's called user list view. And that inherits from the Django REST framework generics.listAPI view. The query set is going to be user.objects.all because we're going to serialize user objects. And we're going to use our new user serializer as the serializer class on this generic. And I'm setting pagination to none so that we don't get a paginated response. What we can then do is start the Django server and we're going to go to the API here. And let's create a URL slash API slash users here. And at the moment that does not exist. So let's go back to the application and let's go to urls.py within the API project. And we're going to copy this down to the line below and let's define a new API path here. And it's going to be for slash users. And the view that we're going to call here is that new user list view that we just created. And if we now go back to the browsable API and refresh the page, we get back the users. And actually it's not slash API slash users, it should just be slash users to match what we have in urls.py. Now the important point for this video is to notice what fields we have. We have the username, the email and is staff fields. And those come directly from this user serializer. So in the meta class, the fields option is explicitly set to those fields. And if we need to add a new field to our API response, we can do that. For example, adding is super user. Then if we go back to the browsable API and refresh, you can see that new field is there. Now let's change this to that special value. So what I'm going to do here is remove the tuple and we're going to define fields as a string and the text is going to be dunder all. If we save that and go back to the browsable API and refresh, we now get back every single field that's connected to the user model. And notice that that includes the password field, albeit the hashed password. And we also get empty lists for groups and user permissions. Now this is the thing I saw very recently in a production project. There were lots of model serializers that had that field set to the dunder all value. And that means that every single field in the model was being returned as the serialized response data. Now, in my opinion, this is a bad idea for a number of reasons. One of them is obvious here for the user model. We are returning each user's hashed password as part of the response data. And that's just not a good idea for a number of reasons. And we're also returning all fields on the model. And it's unlikely that our client is going to need all of the data all of the time. And that means you're potentially returning unnecessary data. And that's going to make your response larger in size. And it's going to impact performance the more data that you're returning and the more objects that you're returning. And maybe the most serious problem, in my opinion, is that if you add a new field to the model, for example, here we have a user model. If we add a new field, 
We don't need to explicitly add it to the fields, but that means that sensitive data is potentially going to be returned to your clients. And similarly, if you delete a field from the model, you're potentially breaking the contract without knowing it because you're not explicitly defining what fields you want to use in the given serializer. So when you add new fields or delete fields from a model, and then you migrate those changes to the database using Django, that is all kind of hidden from the serializer fields, and it means that you might be returning data that you no longer need or that you don't want to return. It could potentially be sensitive data and so on. So I don't like this approach, and if I can recommend something, it's to be as explicit as possible with the fields that you're returning from a serializer. Now there are other reasons that you want to avoid using this. One of them is that you can't reference related fields or nested fields, for example, on a foreign key object. And you can't reference properties and model methods that have no parameters, as we're about to see later in the video. So I think that using fields with explicit names, such as this method here, is the best way to do this. Now, as well as fields, there's another option that you can use. So I'm going to comment that out. And that other option is exclude. And that's a tuple that you can pass to the serializer. And that's going to exclude those fields from the response. So for example, if we want to exclude the password and the user permissions, we can do that. And then if we save this and go back to the browsable API, notice that the password is not there. Neither is the user permissions. So rather than explicitly defining the fields you want to include, here we are defining the fields we want to exclude from the response. Now this works, but for the same reasons as using Dunder all, I don't really like this either. When you specify what should be excluded, again, it means that any new fields that are added are going to be returned as part of the response and you might not want that. And the other problem that I just mentioned, to reference properties and model methods that have no parameters, we can't do this with exclude. We need to use fields instead. I'm going to give an example of this. So the Django user model has a property that you've probably seen called is authenticated, and that's going to be true or false. And there's also a model method that takes no parameters called get full name. And basically that concatenates the user first name and last name and returns a full name. So let's save this and we're going to see that it doesn't work with exclude. So let's go back to this page here and refresh and we're going to get an error. The field is authenticated was included on the serializer in the exclude option, but it does not match a model field. So what I'm going to do is just change this to fields. So let's remove the comment and exclude here. We're going to set the fields instead. So rather than setting what we want to exclude, we're going to explicitly set what we want to return. And this is going to work now. So let's go back to the browsable API and refresh. And now we get the response here containing items. And you can see the is authenticated property. And we can also get the full name here. Now for these users, that's empty because I've not added a first name and a last name to these users. Now I've just went to the Django admin and for one of the users, I've given them the first name and last name of John Doe. And you can see the get full name return value here is set now to John Doe. So this is one important benefit of fields other than the ones we've already mentioned. We can reference properties on the model and we can also reference methods that don't have any arguments. And one final benefit if we go to models.py is that we can also reference foreign keys and related fields. So for example, the order model here has a reference to the user who created that order. So that's a foreign key. And if we want to go from the user to all of the orders, let's add a related name here of orders. And we can then reference that related name in the serializer. And we can do that for the user serializer. So the user is going to have a reference to all of the orders. If we do that and go back to the browsable API, you can see we now get orders appearing here. And if we wanted more data than just the ID, we can create a nested serializer for that representation. So this has been a short video going over the different ways we can include or exclude fields from the response in our serializer classes. And this is specific to model serializers that have a meta class containing these fields. We can use the tuple of explicit fields and that's the approach I would recommend. We can also have the dunder all value to include all of the fields on a model, which I would not recommend. And that's for the reasons mentioned earlier in the video. And for the same reasons, I don't recommend using exclude either. I think the best way to do this is to have an explicit set of fields for each model serializer in your application. And that way you get no surprises. And when you need to add a new field, you're going to find out about that very quickly. And it's also going to help prevent you leaking any sensitive data to your clients. So that's all for this video. We're going to move on to caching with Django REST Framework and Redis in the next video. And if you have any further requests for REST Framework content, let me know in the comments. We're going to move on very soon on the channel and also do a series where we create an application. And I'm not sure what to use in the front end, but we are going to use Django REST Framework as the API client. So if you have any ideas for what we could do there, let us know in the comments as well. And again, if you want to support the channel, check out our coffee page. Thanks very much to everyone who's supported the channel so far. 
and thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.